Hello friends, this is Danny McQuarters at ArtReach. If you've been keeping up over the past couple of days, you've seen our Black Artist Highlights. And today we have a very special guest and longtime friend of ArtReach of Mint, Michigan, Barbara Taylor. So if you can introduce yourself, your name, and where you are from, and what type of art do you do? Okay, uh, my name is Barbara Taylor. Um, I live in Mount Pleasant and have been here for decades. <laughs> um, I originally started working with clay and uh, as time has gone on, and my experiences have moved along, um, I've started working with painting and drawing and uh, using mixed media. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with clay, uh, 3D and 2D work. <laughs> nice. How did you get started with clay? Was it just something you were interested in one day and you know you just hopped into it? or The reason I got started was because for a many, many years I had been afraid to get involved with working oh, yeah. in mm -hmm. art. And I was working at the university and they had a fabulous uh, clay studio there. Mm -hmm. So I decided I have to bite the bullet and get my hands into <laughs> some kind of visual art form. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took courses at the university mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Nice. So um, I hear that a lot, how a lot of people are afraid of art or, you know, scared to jump into it. And I, I've never touched clay, honestly, because, you know, I'm just, I just know that I'm going to mess it up. Oh, what, has that translated into your life? Like, uh, your, I guess, the facing of the fear of the art world, has that translated into your, you know, non-art life in any way of uh, facing fears or helping you conquer, you know, challenges in life at all? It has. Um, I think that was my, at the time, I was young at the time, and that was my biggest fear, getting uh, mm -hmm. involved with art. Mm -hmm. Even though I used to hang around with artists, mm -hmm. it was something I thought I could never do, but I decided to bite that bullet, as I said. And, uh, and then it gave me confidence to grow um, in other areas, mm -hmm. and uh, taught me not to be afraid what you have to lose by trying. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's the uh, the biggest thing that getting involved with, with art has taught me. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, one of the best quotes that I heard was, um, if you mess up an art project and that's the worst thing that happened to you today, then you had a pretty good day. <laughs> it's, you know, um, I guess if you were like doing on a big commission or something, but you know, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, uh, facing that fear. I tell my students, you really cannot mess it up. Mm -hmm. Um, art is art, and you can adapt it. Right. If you think you've made a mistake or it's not what you ir originally planned it to be, you can adapt it mm -hmm. and yep. make it a feature, that mistake, right. a feature of your work. Mm -hmm. Those happy accidents. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so what types of, when you're creating art, what type of themes do you pursue, if any uh, types of themes, or do you just go with what you're feeling at the moment? I usually go with what I feel at that moment. Mm -hmm. um, that I guess that's one part of it. But I will work with uh, a lot of natural uh, materials mm -hmm. and develop organic themes uh, throughout my artwork. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so what types of, um, like I guess to kind of tag along with that last question, what, I know you said you worked in clay, so do you create uh, vases, cups, mugs, all of the above, <laughs> everything in between? Uh, what do you say is your main thing that you make? Uh, I did know that it had, well the theme is that it has to be organic. Okay. So that mm -hmm. could be whether it's clay or whether it's painting or right. uh, mm -hmm. pulling together uh, natural objects that are in and around the house, even right. outside in the garden. Mm -hmm. um, I like the natural feel and the natural look mm -hmm. in, in the artwork, and, um, and so that's what I focus on, and that's my theme, to make it look as natural right. as it mm -hmm. possibly can. Because mm -hmm. it is a lot of beauty in nature. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, and the clay is from the earth, right? Yeah. so mm -hmm. I you know, like that, uh, to include that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, so I also noticed that you do a lot for the community um, at large, and a lot of that is through works of art or instruction. Um, what, how does art help you connect to your community and help you know foster change for the better good? And what all do you do uh, for the yeah, community? Yeah, what I do and how it fosters good, I think, and uh, and, and teaches and uh, gives people uh, the knowledge of value in the arts in the process, 
and also the finished process. And that is in, um, in teaching, through teaching. Um, I teach uh, students in the GIRESD programs um, in preschool, elementary, high school, and transition programs, and expose them to how they can make art mm -hmm. and uh, what they can do for their community in creating the mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. And um, several of the community members, that, as I used to think, because I can't afford to do art because I don't have the money to invest in the materials, but um, it does allow, and, and I focus on using materials that are easily obtainable either mm -hmm. in the house or outside the house. Mm -hmm. Um, and the children who I am teaching, and also adults who I teach, um, can pass on this message yeah. that mm -hmm. you can be creative, you can get involved with this process, mm -hmm. and this is how you can contribute to the um, mm -hmm. community and get involved yeah. in various art forms within the community. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think, I do, I do obviously focus on visual arts, but it gives you a curiosity about performing arts oh, yeah. too, mm -hmm. and so it sort of uh, spills over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I know that a lot of your work is through teaching out in the community. Uh, what would you say is the best um, feeling or, you know, what is the best part about teaching your craft, uh, whether it be to kids or adults, or uh, what's your favorite part about that process? Most satisfying is their ability to recognize that they can do it. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Sometimes people and adults, like I was, are afraid to get involved with it because they feel they cannot mm -hmm. do it. But um, it's watching them get involved in it and then grow mm -hmm. and see them learning the kinds of uh, art forms they can create mm -hmm. and knowing that I can do this and it's not just for other people, mm -hmm. um, I can do it too. Mm -hmm. And they do uh, create wonderful uh, projects. And uh, it's interesting to see them adapt to um, what I ask them to do mm -hmm. and instruct them to do. And they may have a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And so we'll talk about that and I'll say, go for it. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> You've taught me something mm -hmm. too. <laughs> yep. And with artists, like everybody's personality and you know, almost their spirit comes through with they create. Yes, and, absolutely. Yeah, and you can kind of just, even if two people try to replicate something, you can, you know, probably point out something, you know, about that person in the artwork. Exactly. Or something. And that's yes, really good. Yeah, because um, in the classroom, we, uh, start with the basics, I set the, uh, the sort of requirements that we need to infuse into this piece of art. Mm -hmm. um, and they do it, and it, they all look different. <laughs> right. And mm -hmm. then they have freedom then um, to individualize their work after mm -hmm. they've done the complete Right. <laughs> yeah. So that growth factor is really big. Uh, what would you say to someone who's watching this at home um, who either really want to get into clay or any type of art and just was scared <laughs> to uh, is just, you know, have that reluctancy? What would you say is, um, what's a piece of advice to get them over that hump? What I have done, what I continue to do, if I'm looking outside in the garden and the bark of a tree looks really fascinating mm -hmm. and interesting. And I, I wonder how I could create that into a piece of art. Mm -hmm. And then go from there and it could either be with clay, or you could do it with a pencil and paper, mm -hmm. or um, paint, mm -hmm. um, cut up paper. Um, just look, be aware of your surroundings, mm -hmm. and think of ways you might be able to replicate that. Mm -hmm. Nice. In so, a different way. Yeah. So draw inspiration from nature. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a really good um, piece of advice. Um, so is it any memorable, like throughout your artistic career, um, is it any big memorable pieces that you would like to share? Or like is it any time that a student just did something that was like, you know, that just pops in your mind as a very memorable moment uh, throughout your artistic career? Okay, you pop that question <laughs> yeah. on me out of nowhere and immediately what comes to mind 
is uh, one of the students who is uh, one of the students who has disabilities, mm -hmm. and uh, we were working on a project in the classroom, and um, he let loose with the project. <laughs> And it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it was displayed at the, uh, one of the galleries in uh, Grand Rapids. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. so that, that, that stands nice. out. Yeah, yes. yeah, just that student growth and achievement. And those light bulb moments, too, I think are just like so amazing when the students actually go in and, you know, push out their full potential yeah. and um, grow. And this was um, a student who was extremely nervous about mm -hmm. getting involved with the art mm -hmm. process. Yep. Um, okay, so what have, um, oh, oh, what, um, if you were, so I know in the past you've been really involved with ArtReach and um, just, just different um, community organizations that are involved with art. And honestly, you inspire me a lot um, with, you know, all the things that you do or when I'm just here like, oh, you know, Barbara used to do that too here. You know, like, I'm just like, oh my goodness, I want to be like her one, you know, when I grow up. Uh, what uh, piece of advice do you have for someone like me who wants to get, you know, who is, artists in their own way, but wants to get more um, that community involvement piece, as in the networking and the, um, you know, planning and that process. What would you say to someone who wanted to be more involved in creating these opportunities, um, even if they didn't want to teach, uh, but didn't really know where to go or where to seek out these opportunities at? So how would they, would they get involved? Yeah, how would they get involved and uh, what can they do to get involved? Um, if there's any um, opportunities, and they don't have to be specific opportunities, but what types of things should someone be doing if they want to be a bigger part of their community? I would say certainly contact outreach, <laughs> um, <laughs> because outreach is a wealth of uh, has a wealth of information and a wealth of projects that they uh, are involved with in the community throughout the year, and. Uh, give out reach call and say, how can I help? Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you're not a painter or you're not a ceramicist, um, there are other you know, groundwork that needs mm -hmm. to be done. And then you can move up from there if you want to get involved in actually creating art. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to, um, I don't know how to really ask this question, this is kind of out of left field <laughs> or whatnot, but is there anything that you adamantly hate or dislike about the process of art or the type of art that you do? Is there any frustrating or tedious parts that you just wish wasn't there? <laughs> no, I love the process, of, <laughs> love the process of creating art. Mm -hmm. uh, the most challenging project that I'm working on at this very minute is um, teaching preschoolers. Mm -hmm. which How's I, that going? <laughs> which I start doing on Monday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm, the, the difficulty is, is creating projects that the students are going to be able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as an adult and with the experiences I have, I do X, Y, Z right. um, on a project I have for them. Um, they're going to be working with clay, and uh, I, that's pretty much under control. But what I need to do is bring the projects down, other projects, mm -hmm. because they're going to be working on projects other than clay, mm -hmm. is designing the process by which these young children, mm -hmm. with their tiny hands, uh, are going to be able to manage the, the artwork that right. I'm preparing for. Mm -hmm. So that's been, it, it has been frustrating, it's been challenging, mm -hmm. um, but I, I have got it now down to a process where the little tiny hands are going to be able to manage the materials that right. I have in mind for mm -hmm. them. And um, the actual design of the artwork you're going to be able to accomplish. Right. So is it the uncertainty that was kind of the block with this group of kids? I think it was the, the uncertainty and what are their abilities mm -hmm. and um, how can I teach that uh, process to them at their level. Right. Mm -hmm. and I have it done. I, I, <laughs> yeah, nice. I, I, I've worked it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there well, were projects I was working on at home for them, and mm -hmm. um, 
I now have uh, the, the project all the <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll all my down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, and it is different from kids to adults. It's a completely different. The same project you have to teach them completely separate techniques. Exactly. And, yeah, and kids might be, you know, their attention get <laughs> off somewhere else. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. So that can be kind of a challenge. But good luck to you. Hopefully that part. <laughs> uh, it's going to well. be fun. We will do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Even um, in art, mm -hmm. there are no mistakes. Right. Yep. So if you think you made a mistake, mm -hmm. we can adapt it. Right. And those are all good lessons to teach yes. your little ones too. <laughs> um, and lessons through life as well. Yes. <laughs> often they can, mm -hmm. those mistakes can be adapted. Right. Yep. Um, do you ever work in a, um, I guess not series of works, but are you working on anything as in like personal art projects right now um, that you would like to share or talk about or anything that you've done recently outside of teaching um, for the sake of making art? Yes, every once in a while a couple of friends and I get together and we uh, decide what kind of projects we're going to mm -hmm. work on. And so um, the, what I have moved into is working with uh, cement and high, making hypertufa oh. and making garden. Wait, what is it? You outside. say making what? I'm sorry. Hypertufa. What is, what is that? Um, H y p e r t u f a. It's a combination of materials, oh, okay. primarily cement mm -hmm. and uh, peat moss mm -hmm. and uh, water and mm -hmm. some uh, kind so of So mixed up stuff. Material. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we would make uh, sculptural forms that we can put into our gardens. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So you also use art as a um, social and bonding experience. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And it's so diverse, the world of art. You can pretty much, you know, you can teach with it, learn, bond with it, connect with the community. It's yeah. so and, far and it's reaching. it's amazing what an artist can learn from non-artists, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Because um, we have, you know, artists have the you know, technical knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, um, but the non-artists, they often coming in cold and have different ways of doing things or different mm -hmm. ways that they might want to do things. So we, we learn from each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, is there anything else you would like to share with uh, the people watching today? Um, any pieces of advice or any um, things to push them to get into the art world or get involved in their community through art? I think my biggest piece of advice would be you know, don't be afraid if you think, if the thought crosses your mind that I want to do something in visual art, um, go for it. And you don't have to start large, you can start very small. And I um, started after I had taken classes at the university, I ordered you know, a little bag of clay and a couple of glazes. and. Um, it has blown into a studio, so mm -hmm. I have uh, all the equipment in my studio. Nice. <laughs> go from there, so yeah. I can do it whenever I want to. Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for coming out today. Um, I hope you all learned a lot at home about how art can be used through community, through teaching, and just for bonding and social experiences. So thank you, Barbara Taylor, uh, for thank coming you. here today. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>